this is it. This is the last sermon of 2021. For the past four weeks, we've been headed toward the Advent season, going through hope and love and joy, toward that moment when the Christ spirit is born in each of us. We all had that anticipation that the Christ spirit was going to be born and birthed. And we had all these wondrous times of family and friends in the last month. So what do we do now? Where do we go from here? The shepherds are back with their flocks. The little drummer boy that brought his drum to a birth has left. The wise men are wandering around. It's time to take down the Christmas tree and put away the decorations and supposedly get back to work. So my decorations typically don't go down until about Easter. But this is like the first time with children. For those of you who have had children, the night before the birth of your first child changes your life like nothing else in all of your life. For that one moment, you are a couple without children. The moment that cry occurs the next day or that night, your life is changed forever. It's the same way with this. If we open to it, it gets so easy to get into the rhythm and the, the routine of Christmas. But every year, there comes a point in time when something reminds us how special life is. In, in Napa this year, we've been reminded by a couple of our dearest friends leaving. Fred and John. Not having any idea that would happen at the beginning of the year. And with that kind of preciousness, it reminds us that every day, Every day we're launched into something special. God gives us this ultimate gift. But it's, it's not the birth of the Christ spirit within us. It's the fact that we are semicolon, semicolon, willing to go through that change. Now, there's probably not a person in here, me included, who puts change at the top of my favorite things to do in life. You know, all of us can sit and think of a restaurant that was our favorite growing up that's now closed. Or a store. I mean, I thought I'd never say this. Remember Sears? <laughs> it's called the journey of the wise men and the change that goes on for each of us. And what part of that change about that is so difficult is it's always filled with letting go and picking up. And that letting go is a grieving. It's a growth. It's a movement forward. I have a dear friend that is a consultant. She goes into churches and works with staffs. And I asked her, well, what, what is it that, I mean, how do you do that? She says, well, I have this, this gene that somebody forgot to give me. I never look back. I always look forward. So when something happens, I don't spend any time at all ruminating about what just went away. I immediately go, oh, what are we going to do now? And that's a difficult thing for us as human beings. Because in our presence of walking life, we forget that God is walking with us. Because God works in such subtle ways with us. You know, I talk all the time about the fact that, I don't know about you, but I have a better way to do this. And God never listens to me. 
I think this thing of putting us in a human body was a big mistake. You know, I think we did a lot better as the divine. And then we're still the divine, but God said, well, let me give you a body. And then let me let it wear out for you. Hmm. One way <clears throat> or another. Who knew that every candy bar I ate would come back to haunt me? One of my favorite quotes that I had no idea and did not understand when I was in my 30s was the 70-year-old man that said, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of my body. And in this journey, as we move forward, one of the cool parts about it is we don't do it alone. I mean, look in the faces that we see. When I was in my youth, I went into the National Guard and I went to boot camp and discovered boot camp is a really not fun thing. But one of the pluses for it is you're all in it together. You're not sitting there by yourself. The man sitting next to you is going through the same stuff you are. And that's one of the things we need to keep remembering as we look in the faces around us we're all going through this we're all going through the ups and downs and step backs and all of the different parts of life is that presence of god watching with us and walking with us and remember god does continue to give us direction i want you to remember we we really know the first part of the story of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. But God continued to work with that trio. God reminded Joseph, it's time to go home, to get out of here. And you cannot go back the way you came because that's not safe. So he gave direction to them. And when a Roman royalty, Herod, had the three wise men in front of them and wanted to know all about the baby Jesus and wanted to make sure they came back and reported about the baby Jesus, the three wise men looked at each other and said, no, we don't think we're going to do that. That's how spirit can be elusive. That's that when we go, where do we go from here? Sometimes things happen and we go. Boy, I really don't understand how that works. And we may not today or next month or next year. You know, as I went through my life, I couldn't understand how difficult it was to stay married. You know, I, th I thought I could do a good job doing that. And I got to a point where I went 20 years single with a vow of never getting married again. Not realizing that out of nowhere, someone was coming my way. It's the way life works. Spirit is elusive. And we're moving into 2022 with all these priorities and things happening. And we don't know what's ahead for us more so than ever in the history of the world. I mean, a thousand flights canceled yesterday because of Omicron and weather and all sorts of different things. I read the story of a doctor trying to get home to his father who had cancer, and he got halfway, got to Salt Lake City, but his layover turned out to be something more, and it was going to take a few days. There was no, there's no way to tell. There's no way to tell what's going to happen next. And so it behooves us to be fully open to knowing that in all that is ahead for us, God is walking with us. That there is always a way, my personal belief, that it will always work out one way or another. Now, it's that thing about consequences. 
Someone once said to me, well, there aren't consequences on everything. And I said, well, yes, there are. I mean, we have the ability to run a red light if we want. There are some interesting consequences if we do. So where are we now? It's the day after the Christ spirit. All of us had poignant memories yesterday of one kind or another. We've had the shortest day of the year. And I think it's always so interesting, the shortest day of the year, the shortest time of the year in terms of light is a time when many, many faith traditions have light festivals. What a great, great response to that. But our challenge is just to keep moving, even though we don't know what's ahead for us. It's that part, and for some reason I have a default that's that, but my default is a tigger. And when things happen, I just go, yay, God, here we go again. And then some people will just reach over and put their hand on my shoulder and tell me to calm down. But what I keep hearing, what I keep feeling, the sense is, no matter what this year is going to be, it's going to be magical. We're going places we've never gone before. And the really important thing is we go forth with a beginner's mind. That's a Buddhist term in a practice called Shoshin. It's setting aside preconceived notions and opinions and beliefs to look at something as if you were a beginner. And as a beginner, we know nothing. I don't know about you, but the farther along in life I get, the less I know. It seems that I've come to a point in my life where my response many times are not words. I just sit. And with a beginner's mind and that Buddhist approach, it means that we're taking something that may have happened thousands of times and just saying, even though I, I've done it, reacted this way all the time before, maybe this time it's something different. What does it cause when you do a beginner's mind? Well, there are a few great examples. Amazon has a culture called the day one culture throughout its company. Their goal is to have the same zeal and innovative capacity that they had when the, they started their startup. Their goal is not to have egos say, well, this is the way we've always done it. They're looking outside to try to get feedback. They embrace patterns of how things go. And is it working? Well, I don't know. It seems like every time I drive down the street, there are eight Amazon Prime trucks coming by. The beginner's mind takes us out of this is how I do things. And instead of going, this is the way I do it, is... Is this the way I want to do it? I have two examples that came up for me this last week. We sat down and watched Being the Ricardos last week, the movie about Lucy and Desi. And the interesting part for me was that Desi and Lucy approached life with a beginner's mind. They were the first to ever use three cameras during taping. And they used three cameras, so it separated, it took away the separation, because before it was one camera and then the audience, they spaced the camera so the audience was almost on the set. They were the first ones to use 35 millimeters so that they could tape the show. So it was the first time they had the ability 
to keep episodes, which is why there are no TVs or media that don't have syndicated versions of I Love Lucy. They were the first ones that when Lucy got pregnant, and they spent time talking about how they were going to have her stand behind tables and carry loads of laundry. Desi says, well, no, no, we're going to have her get pregnant on the show. Which had never been done. And the, the Philip Morris talked about pulling out of the show because of that. And yet in the end, the episode where little Ricky was born was the highest watched episode of television up to that time. Looking at a beginner's mind at how you do things. Another example of that, and it's, it's that truth that we all have the ability to do it, are the Beatles. There's a documentary out called Get Back, where it's 150 hours of them preparing for their last concert. And in the space of about three weeks, they had to write 14, 15, 16 songs. And it's watching them write this music. And realizing. They looked at everything with beginner's mind. At one point, Paul McCartney says, I want the piano to be a little tinnier. And the producer said, well, I've heard if you put paper in the piano, it'll mute it. So they go get a bunch of newspaper and throw it in the piano and play it to get a different sound. At one time, George Harrison says, I'm working on this song called Something, and all I've got thus far is something in the way she moves attracts me. And he says, that's all I've got. And John Lennon says to him, well, George, just put whatever word you need in there until you get the right word. So you just do something in the way she moves, attracts me like no other cauliflower. And that's what he did. He just went throwing in words. A beginner's mind, the fact that it's limitless possibilities. There are rules of life. And our goal is as we open to where we go next, to take a look at all those rules and decide which ones are self-censored rules that we apply to ourselves. I was a sales manager for a long time. And one of the difficult things is to get people who are going into sales to stop self-censoring. And we all do it. It's that, oh, I don't think I should call them right now. They're probably not home. Oh, I don't think I'm going to ask them that question. They just got back from vacation. It's us stopping a chance to give other people the ability to say things. In the Hallmark movies, the magic of Hallmark, we watch all the time. And the one thing that gets me frustrated on the screen is when it comes to a point and I'm sitting there going, just communicate with each other. Tell her how you feel. And all across America, there are hundreds of thousands of us doing that same thing. Say something. And I give thanks for that because I have a personal thing. If Rachel hadn't sent an email on December 16th, 2005 to ask me out, where would I be? She went ahead and did it. She said she still is not sure why, other than the fact that she wanted a date. Beginner's mind saints. 
opening to the next level, knowing that God walks with us. And this is our challenge for 2022 and where we go from here. All of us have personal dreams, personal steps, personal things that we want to do. It's taking that next step. Sure, the world has some restrictions. It's a little difficult to gather together in groups of a thousand people nowadays. But look at the blessings. I don't know about you, but I've had some pretty amazing Zoom meetings this year. Pretty amazing Zoom meetings. And I keep thinking back to the, the young man over in the East Bay <laughs> that started Zoom <clears throat> just before the pandemic when he was trying to figure out how he was going to grow his company. <laughs> and now everybody knows. We want to open to that beginner's mind and not get the hammer syndrome. The hammer syndrome is the man with a hammer that sees every problem as a nail. Sometimes that's not how it works. I know we love protocol. We love a certain way to do things. But we don't know what's next. Again, as I mentioned earlier, when Marsha was lighting the flame, for me, the opening of unity of Napa will always be my vision of John getting up and walking to the back of his room and lighting our candles. It will always be that way. And there is that familiarity, but that's the next step that we're taking. That we're turning off our autopilot and we're moving ahead. So our challenge is still, where do we go from here? But it's very, very simple in that there are a few simple parts to it. We don't know what's next. We are not working alone. We are in community. We are working to stay awake and see what is around us. We are opening to our beginner's mind and realize we really don't know anything. We'd have to be a teenager to know everything. And we continue to move forward. I love it. I got a laugh in the back of the room on that one. Because she's had teenagers before. And so as we move forward this year, it's going to be one heck of a magical year. There will be change for each of us. We will look back a year from now and look back and go, I can't believe what happened this year. It's time to be alarmingly enthusiastic because God is walking with us. So this is going to be an e-ticket Disneyland ride. This is going to be the best. So I'm glad to be with you, all of you on it. Isn't it going to be a great one? And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Now, having a beginner's mind, we then step back. Because the truth is what we carry inside us, we're going to take a little time to move into some meditation. And one of the blessings here is as we take a deep breath and start to slow down, we breathe in the light of spirit. That magical connection we have with the divine. As we breathe out, we let go. Not always sure of what we're letting go. Breathing in spirit and breathing out release.
each breath, allowing us to move deeper within. Deeper within the very heart of who we are. And as we do, we give thanks. And we know deep, deep within, there's a place beyond measure, a place of quiet. A place of calmness. And we're going to take a few minutes to sit in this place in silent, in sacred silence. And as we prepare to drift to that place, just allow yourself to be fully in that place. As your mind starts to wander, bring it back. Focusing on your breathing. As we take time, to sit in the sacred silence.
Each breath, allowing us to connect with this quiet, this calm. This place of serenity we carry with us. That we can visit any time we choose. We note the feeling of rest and quiet the deep connection within how all else fades away and we give thanks. We give thanks that this refueling, this gathering within allows us to ground To move into a more balanced place. And as we come near the end of this quiet time, we know there are many more ahead for us. We take a deep breath and allow the energy of the world around us to start to reconnect with us. As we rise through the various levels within to that place in the surface where our authentic self shows up and we give thanks. Taking a deep breath and allowing that energy to become fuller, become stunningly present. We take another breath and realize we're not alone, that we've been doing this journey with a, a community of hearts, all facing in a particular direction, walking on each of their paths. And we give thanks for that. Taking another breath and allowing the energy to grow more and more until when the time is perfect, when the time is right, we open our eyes and come back and see across from us other faces, realizing that we have been here with other people. We give thanks. And in doing so, we do the ultimate that we do often in life. We turn it over to a musician. 